morning. Thank you, Adrian. I'm aware I'm between you and coffee, so I'll try to be brief. Um, I would like to briefly speak about our building programs we have implemented and the lessons uh, we have learned from them. So uh, uh, the region is called Upper Austria in the northern part of Austria between Vienna and Salzburg, those who have been uh, to Austria. My own organization is the Regional Energy Agency. We provide services to everyone basically who either produces energy or consumes it. And among other things, we support the regional government in implementing building programs. So since 93, more than 110,000 buildings have been assessed uh, by us and also the owners have been advised. So I guess we have seen a couple of buildings. Uh, all that we do is based on our regional energy strategy. Long term is uh, the key word here. So um, at the moment, we have a share of about a third renewables uh, of the total primary. We have cover half of our heating from renewables. That already saves us more than 1 billion euro every year. And uh, in 2007, the regional government decided that by 2030, all our re electricity and all our space heating will come from renewables. Uh, that will require two things, as in any building, decrease of demands and increase of renewables. Um, and this is what we have to do. The motivation to do that were coming actually only partly from climate protection, very much so from economic and social consideration. Easy to say, hard to do, like any big target. So what we try to use is what we call the carrots, the sticks, and the tambourines, especially in the building sector. Our donkey, it's like the good old building market, very resistant to change. So actually one incentive is usually not sufficient to make it change, to make it move. And I think this is one of the fundamental misunderstandings. I often hear this debate, just having enough money, whoops, it will solve all our problems. Uh, I know that you in this room, you don't know, you don't believe that, but uh, the regulatory uh, plus the tambourine, the information, the awareness raising, the training, uh, the empowerment of the individual homeowners is at least as important. Austria has a very long tradition of housing programs since World War II. These are big programs that have fundamentally the objective uh, to create housing. In the early 90s, we started introducing energy efficiency criteria, revolutionary. We were told you will, this will stop the housing market to develop. Uh, well, it didn't. Um, and uh, it's a large program for single uh, and multi-family buildings. First, only new construction and then also renovation with energy efficiency criteria. First, as an option to get additional money, now as a minimum requirement. Uh, in, since 1998, uh, we have looked at 45,000 buildings and processed them through the program. These are deep renovations um, uh, with different performance levels. So the, the better the efficiency, the higher is the loan. There's free individual on-site advice. So this is the tambourine, a homeowner that understands what is happening here. That will create additional uh, energy uh, efficiency gains that are not actually included in any of the calculations. Yeah. Typically, um, on the average, and well, these are rather familiar numbers, if you remember Adrian's introduction, so before renovation, um, they had about, it's a useful heat factor, so we always have to be aware what kind of energy performance indicator we compare with another. So typically before 240 after 60 kilowatt hours per square meter year, so the typical factor for renovation. Now, uh, if we look uh, at some more results, and again, uh, the pictures of good programs do resemble each other. So in our case, we have, in last year, we had 5,500 homes. That cost us, uh, the region, 36 million euro. The energy-related investment created, so the additional investment for the energy efficiency measures, about 200 million. Uh, the employment equivalent, I don't like to say we create jobs, uh, because we don't. We create employment for a specific time period, um, and this equals 30,000 person years. 
that creates tax. Obviously, at least uh, minimum is the, uh, at least the VAT, which is 400 million. However, um, I think part of that thinking got many countries in Europe into that crisis. So just to create job, I think we have moved away from uh, justifying public expenditure. So we need more, and actually building renovation has that more. Some of it are the savings you can find below. Um, here is uh, a slide from the new home program. And this is, um, I think, very important. Uh, uh, the, the, the red line is the requirement for, sorry, the green line is the requirement for the program, for the additional uh, uh, grant money. And you can see over the year how the requirements went down. There are some levels below which I didn't show for simplification reasons. And the legal requirement follow that curve more or less in parallel about five years later. So I think this is also super important that there is a link. The funding program allows the market to learn. Uh, and then after some years, uh, we can introduce this as a requirement. And you can see the red line going down with the action plan uh, for the uh, EPBD. We already know, at least in Austria, what will be the legal threshold uh, until 2020. And it's good that we start discussing what is going to happen later. One uh, word about ESCOs. Of course, we also did ESCO programs in the regional government buildings. So in total, we have now five pools of buildings. Um, all the difficulties uh, with ESCOs have been already wonderfully well described by the Croatian minister. Um, typically, these are contracts for 10 years. Uh, the ESCOs invested more than 3 million euro. Um, the region didn't spend anything and the savings guarantees are two and a half million euro in these 10 years. Again, uh, the ESCO model is wonderful, but it has its limits because you need bad buildings. Uh, and in that, then bad buildings suddenly are good buildings because they have a high efficiency potential. So I'm just a word of warning. Final slide. Um, we don't only need smart building, we also need smart programs. And of course, it, they have to be based on energy performance requirements and not some other, um, sometimes you see them. Uh, you have a trade-off between the energy efficiency ambition and the um, number of buildings you can mobilize. So this is a decision to make. High requirements, fewer buildings, uh, less deep renovation, um, more buildings. The program size matters, we could see quite in, also in my own country, when we had an additional incentive from the national government, we had a boom market. What happened? Prices went up, uh, created all kinds of problems, uh, and we didn't get to the bust, uh, but that also that tends to happen, and then in the end, everyone is un unhappy. There's definitely no one-fits-it-all solution. We can see a certain program, a certain approach can reach a certain layer, and for other layers, we need other programs. And I know that many people are, haven't come to the first layer, but it's important if you think long term, different things work for domestic, non-domestic, different things work uh, for low uh, income and middle class, and I would like to um, tie on what the mayor said. Um, loans are, it's better to give a smaller direct subsidy than the larger loans because many people don't like loans. And of course, we need the right combinations of uh, sticks, carrots, and tambourines. Thank you.